Thank you very much. I've not been well. Christ, you don't get much sympathy from you lot, do you? Right. I've not been well. I've just got over anorexia. <laughs> oh no, she was a big girl, I've heard it as well, right. What a day! The last thing I said before I left home was, stop that son, you'll go blind. He said, I'm over here, Dad. <laughs> He's a lad. Tuesday we had trouble with him. There was a lot of noise coming from his bedroom, so I went up. And there was him and his mate in it, and my, my, my little lad, he sat in this big cardboard box going, I said, what are you up to? He said, we're playing pretend. I said, what, pretend? He said, yeah. I said, what are you? He said, a long distance lorry driver. Looks over in the corner, his mate's doing press ups. I said, what are you up to? He said, I'm giving his old woman up one while he's away working. <laughs> Hello, love. You fancy me, don't you? You little tinker, you've been looking at me thinking I don't stand a chance with him, but you bleeding do, I'll tell you. <laughs> what a week it's been. My, my, my missus, Wednesday, took her driving test. Half past ten, got back at twelve. <coughs> now, you don't like to say anything, do you? Because, you know, ump and all that. So I went. <coughs> Tea time. <coughs> Bedtime. I thought, I've got to say something caring. I said, you failed. I said, who did you knock over? She said, no, I've got a question wrong. I said, which one? She said, he said to me, if I was driving down a country lane, what's the most common road sign you'd see? I said, what do you say? She said, pick your own strawberries. <laughs> Been a great day up here, because, you know, it's fabulous, because we all nipped over at the pub for a swift hour for the show. And I'm nosy, and there are two blokes down at the bar, and I always listen. One said, Harry, he said, what? He said, look over by the machine, over there. He said, where? He said, over there. He said, yeah. He said, who's that geezer? He said, an awful familiar. He said, yeah, it's the Archbishop of Canterbury. He said, no. He said, yeah. He said, go and ask him. He said, no. Nah. He said, buy your pint. He said, all right. So he walked over. He said, excuse me, sir, are you the Archbishop of Canterbury? He said, piss off. <laughs> he walked back. His mate said, what did he say? He said, he wouldn't commit himself. Bit of good news, two fleas have won a million pound on the football pools. They're going to buy a dog in Marbella. <laughs> Here's another one you won't get. <laughs> now, you look an intelligent audience, you can tell me, why is it it takes a woman suffering from PMTs eight hours to boil an egg? Because it does! Just taken up golf. Fabulous sport. Anyone play golf here? Brilliant. Went down to the golf club, met the captain, said, could I have a round of golf, mate? He said, no. I said, why? He said, go away, it's a private match. I said, who's playing? He said, the Freemasons and the Buffaloes. I said, what's the score? He said, I don't know, it's a secret. <laughs> I said, I'm not going till I get a free round of golf. He said, you mean that, don't you? I said, I do. Sent me out with his golf, he was deaf. Well, I think he was deaf, in fact, I'm sure he was deaf. Because like we got to the 14th, I said, you're a putt in front, and he hit me. <laughs> I'm permanently confused, me, you know. It's like, easy for to confuse me, like, why is it Japanese suicide pilots always wear crash helmets? <laughs> Who knows? And why is it girls ain't got crossbars on their bikes? Who knows? Asked my headmaster once, he said, in case they slide off their saddles, they might hurt themselves. <laughs> I mean, what we got? Fresh air between our legs, have we legs? <laughs> what, they think we're holograms or something? <laughs> and the other one, do you remember when your mum used to say, have you got clean underwear on? <laughs> Why? Who knows? I asked my mum years ago, she said, in case you got knocked down, got took to the hospital. Don't make sense, does it? I don't know. I mean, if you're standing in the middle of the road and there's a lorry coming towards you, you're going to shit yourself anyway. Aren't you? <laughs> I like studying humour. Like, like this is a lovely time of the year because we're over the sales and the Christmas like bits gone because blokes aren't designed to go shopping, are they? Like you girls make lists. We ain't got a clue. Twenty to five, Christmas Eve job with us, isn't it? We go berserk. I mean, you see blokes, 25, Christmas Eve, rushing into car shops saying, 
Have you got a Christmas card with wife on it? Yeah. How much? Seven thousand pounds. I'll take it. <laughs> and like, if you've had a few to drink, you come sort of more ambitious with a present, don't you? Like, you might go into one of them Anne Summers sort of naughty nigger shops. And like on Christmas Day, you say, there, I love that's for you. But it's not, is it? For us. <laughs> so I'm not being sexist, but you girls do look good tackled up. <laughs> don't I mean, Jim, all the stirrups and all that, you know. Nah, because not a bloke who don't like stockings and suspenders, is it? We all like them, mind you. I look repulsive because the fat hangs over the top, but... Because <laughs> you don't know mommy, she's difficult to buy for because she's fat. Now, I'm not having to go at her because she ain't got the willpower I've got. Sod her, that's what I say. Because, <laughs> like, you know, I never know what to buy her, so uh, I bought her a satellite dish. Took it home, the greedy cow fried her breakfast in it. <laughs> So I went into this naughty nigger shop and I said, I don't know what sizes she takes or anything like that, but can you help? She said, yeah. How about if you start with a black half cup lace bra? That sounds great. She said, what size cup? <laughs> what? Size cup? I said, obviously you've never met my wife. We're not talking cups, we are talking churns. <laughs> she said, pants? I said, only when I get on top. But who wouldn't? <laughs> Then I was going to get her some of them things that hold the old stockings up, some of them, what are they called, love? Old suspenders. Did you wear them, man? Really? <laughs> They're old-fashioned. Mom she don't wear suspenders. Jump leads. <laughs> Black and red with the crocodile clips, what, what are holding up? Do you know, I feel like I can trust you. I haven't said this to anyone else, but I feel like I can trust you. We have been experimenting sexually, my wife and I. That's not funny, love. We've been trying, all right? <laughs> I mean, she's only been getting on top, hasn't she? I mean, she had to pack it up because her ears keep popping. <laughs> I mean, you think that's embarrassing? Three weeks ago, she burnt the cheeks for arse on the light bulb. Come on down. <laughs> It's a lonely life, this. <laughs> you don't realise, no one ever comes up after the show and says, Dave, come home for a coffee, never. Once it happened, this couple came, they said, do you fancy coming home? I said, coffee? They said, no. <coughs> fancy dress party? I said, what's it all about? So we're dressing up. I said, what in? Kinky leather underwear. <coughs> I've never shirked a challenge. I went as an open crutch, Chesterfield, three-seater city. <laughs> I pulled three years ago in Blackpool, I was lonely, walking down the pier, been on the South Pier, ten o'clock at night, and this bird laying against a tram stop, eating fish and chips out of newspaper with the knickers round her ankles. I thought, she looks like my sort of woman. Because I love chips. I said, excuse me, love, do you know your knickers around your ankles? She said, Christ, has he gone? <laughs> You know, she, she dragged me on the, under the pier. She was ever so strong. And like, she took all her clothes off. Well, I'm no prude, but I went rigid. <laughs> I looked rough at you, tart. Huzzy. Bimbo. Bless her. <laughs> She's going to take yours off, Rambo. I thought, make the girls die. So I took them all off, and after three hours, she stopped laughing. <laughs> she said, be gentle, big boy. No, she never, I just put that in to cheer myself up. <laughs> she said, will it hurt? I said, did it. <laughs> well, when I say she was naked, she wasn't actually naked. Like, she had them suspendry things, you said, like, and stockings and high heels. Well, I know they were high heels, because they were sunk, and she was at an angle of 45 degrees. <laughs> Mind you, thinking about it, they could have been plimsolls, but that's not much of a turn-on, so I thought they were sunk in high heels. Glad you came, up. And <laughs> like they were novelty stockings. One had Happy Christmas, one had Happy New Year. She said, anything I can do for you? I said, you wouldn't invite me up between the holidays, would you, love? <laughs> she said, have you taken any precautions? I said, I've lashed my feet to a deck chair. She said, have you a letter? I said, what do you want? A reference? I didn't know what you wanted about. <laughs> she said, don't you crease my uniform. I said, uniform? She said, that's it, you're in such a hurry, you never noticed. I said, I'm sorry. 
I said, what are you? She said, a whack. I said, what? She said, whack, W-A-C, whack. You know what that stands for? I said, no. She said, a walk and a cuddle. I thought, blimey, the next one I pick up is a whack. <laughs> For me, Dave Lee, good night. See you soon. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're a smashing crowd. Don't know who you are, but you can't land here. I'll move a bit. Right. Now, what can we say about our next act? Because it's my, my pleasure to...